We are about to begin our program, so if you wouldn't mind taking your seats, that would be great. Good morning, and welcome to the sixth commencement ceremony for the Mission Early College High School Class of 2023. We will begin today's ceremony with the national anthem performed by Mex senior Jaden Cardoza, followed by our... <laughs> they love each other. <laughs> followed by our flag salute 
by Serby Pandy, our senior class salutatorian. Please stand for the national anthem.
Thank you, Dessa. For the past 23 years, Santa Clara Unified School District and Mission College have engaged in partnership with a common goal to provide viable college and CTA pathways for students in our community. Every MEC student is also a Mission College student. And just as we share in the educational, intellectual, social, and emotional development of our students, we also share in the celebration of this milestone as they graduate high school. And now I am honored to introduce to you our first speaker who is intimately familiar with the dual enrollment experience of our students as she herself chose, as Robert Frost said, the road less taken. Please join me in welcoming the president of Mission College, Dr. Sahar Awan. Good morning, everyone. I'm so very proud to be president of Mission College. And as uh, Viola shared, I was a middle college student myself uh, at a different high school. But I do want to take a moment to say welcome to our amazing graduates, your families, and the Mission Early College team. It's truly my honor to be able to share a few words with you today. But before I begin, I also want to say congratulations, class of 2023. Let me hear it. <laughs> you outstanding seniors are graduating during an unprecedented time where we need diverse, educated leaders like you. I also want to take a moment to say congratulations to your families. Getting to this point takes support from families, friends, teachers, and your success is shared with them today. Also, I just saw that we have so many of you who are actually graduating with a degree or certificate from Mission College, so I'll look forward to seeing you tonight at 6 p.m. for our commencement as well. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you are inspirations, and I hope you continue with us and let us support you on your journey. As you graduate today, it's important that you know that you are in control. The choices you make, however small or large, mold that future that you will experience and the reality that you create for yourself. You have unlimited potential inside you and the opportunities ahead. You are capable, you are leaders, you have courage and grit, and you are unstoppable. High school, like life, is a journey that provides obstacles that are not meant to be your barriers, they are meant to be overcome. You're not meant to be perfect, you're meant to make mistakes and own them and learn from them. You are the leaders of tomorrow and we need you. We need diverse, educated graduates like you to speak up and to fight for what's right and to make a difference in this world. We need representation in hospitals, in the government, in the legal system, and at every table where decisions are being made. We need you to continue to educate yourself and pursue your dreams. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't and let nothing stand in your way. Education is the most important thing in this world and something that no one can take from you once you have it. Whether you're transferring straight to a four-year institution, continuing with us at mission, going to a different community college or a technical school, I urge you to continue your journey and to invest in yourself. I started out as an unpaid hourly employee and then as an intern. I worked my way up to be president and if I can do this, so can you. I have faith in each of you that if you commit and stay focused, you will achieve everything you set out to do. James Baldwin said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. There may be times in the future that you're afraid of what comes next. You may doubt yourself for your ability, but remember how much you have overcome and how hard you have worked. You have the capacity for greatness, so continue to focus on your life and what you want. Work hard to accomplish the freedom to live the life that you want to live. The one clear memory I have of graduating high school was wanting freedom. Freedom to be me, 
to be financially independent and free to live the life that I wanted to live. And I want that freedom for you too. Life is too short to have regrets and to let others dictate to you how you will live your life. The power of education is that you don't just change your life, you change the life of your families and generations to come with every ceiling that you shatter. So don't wait for permission to live life how you want. Ayn Rand said, the question isn't who is going to let me, it's who is going to stop me. I hope you go forth into this world and never dull your shine for anyone. Don't temper your fire because of what others think. Because you know haters are going to hate. I think we all know that. Uh, but you just move them aside and you keep on walking forward and do what is right for you. Finally, I want to leave you with a quote that I love by Ellen Johnson. She said, the size of your dreams must always exceed your current capacity to achieve them. If your dreams do not scare you, they are not big enough. I charge you to continue to follow your dreams, dream big, and push yourself and never, ever let fear stop you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you today and congratulations to the class of 2023. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, President Awan. That was a very moving and inspirational speech. Thank you. I now have the pleasure of introducing our next speaker, who serves as the liaison to MEX and has supported our program for several years in his role as Vice President of Student Services. Please welcome Dr. Omar Murillo. Good morning, everyone. Let's get the energy going. Let's start with the unity clap. We start slow and then we'll speed up. On my count. All right, give it up for the graduates. Woo! Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here with you all and share a couple of remarks. Uh, I'm grateful for this partnership. Uh, always a special time of year to celebrate our graduates. You know, this partnership with MEX uh, has provided us a unique opportunity uh, to serve our community, to serve our high school students in a way that we haven't before. I specifically appreciate the life that the students, that our MEX community brings to Mission College, right? I see you all around. I see you participating in our programs. I see you making this community what it needs to be. We always talk about this sense of belonging, this sense of community. You all represent that day in, day out. So I'm extremely grateful for that, for uh, the, the value you all bring to our Emoja community, the value you all bring to our Associated Student Government, and all of the other places on campus. You know, MEX has really helped establish this foundation for providing opportunities for our high school students to gain college credit and ultimately gain a degree or a certificate. Right now, just 6% of California high school students take a college course through dual enrollment in their first year. Now, our new California Community College Chancellor coming in, she starts on June 1st. She's committed to ensuring that we are expanding opportunities for our high school students to take college courses, to obtain a college degree, to take from her. She said, can we do this? We must, we must, we can't wait for tomorrow. MEX has helped us lead the way to establish the foundation here within our college and our district to engage in, in that important work. Making college affordable and attainable for all high school students is a commitment that we have. In particular, we have an opportunity to close the equity gaps at the high school level, it's in particular with our black and brown students. And so very happy to see that our MEX program continues to reflect the diversity of our community, right, and ensures that we're closing those equity gaps. Uh, very grateful for the partnership, as I, as I stated. And I wanted to make sure I, I emphasize that point of 
MEX providing us the opportunity uh, to continue this very important work. We're very happy to partner with Santa Clara Unified School District and very happy to continue our partnership with the MEX program. Congratulations to the graduates. Know that you have a home at Mission. Please come visit us anytime. And we do hope to see those of you graduating from Mission later on tonight at our commencement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Murillo. Now I would like to introduce our student speaker who, in addition to serving as our ASB president for the past two years, is also the class of 2023 valedictorian. Please welcome Ms. Nama Siddiqui. Good morning, staff, family, and friends. I am incredibly honored to welcome you all to the Mission Early College High School commencement ceremony for the graduating class of 2023. <laughs> Graduates, today marks the milestone in making it through 13 years of state testing, school lunches, and the Fitness Gram Pacer Test but it also marks the celebration of 13 years of hard work, determination, and resilience. None of us could have done this alone. Thank you to parents who made late night drives to pick up art supplies for a project we just told you about, that's also due tomorrow. But more importantly, thank you for reminding us that our dreams are never out of reach and supporting us each step of the way. Thank you to teachers who kept their snack jars well stocked and shared their wisdom that will hold close with us as we move on to the next stage of our life. And to our graduates, I know it is difficult to sum up how our unique path of success and failure, happiness and sadness, excitement and anxiety has led us to this shared destination. But in these next few minutes, I'd like to try. I was first introduced to most of you during my sophomore year as small colorful icons in a Google Meet. I recognized you by your anime profile, maybe your orange A initial or your grinning headshot. But as junior year rolled around, your icons slowly turned into these living, breathing humans. And I got to know most of you and had the privilege to grow alongside you as we shared struggles and successes with one another. Weeks turned into months, and now we're here. The tears, all-nighters, frantic spark note searches, it was all worth it because we made it. Today, I'd like to remind you of something. We often measure our lives by meeting milestones, graduating high school, walking across this stage, getting married, having kids, the list goes on. Our excitement and anticipation for the future often overshadows the here and now. We forget to applaud every step we've taken to chase our dreams and to enjoy this journey. Most importantly, we forget to slow down. As a child, all I wanted to do was be in high school, have a cell phone, and learn how to drive. I was so excited for high school that I had my older sister teach me how to use a combination lock for my future freshman locker in seventh grade. And while there is no shame in being excited for the future, and working towards your goals as those are rather admirable qualities, it is just as important to acknowledge our everyday successes and trials, the joys and hardships that define our life. In the wise words of Taylor Swift, everything you lose is a step you take. So I urge you seniors to refuse to let a no be the ending of your hopes and dreams. Whether it is, it's rejection, failure, or all of the above, if there's one thing I've learned in my 18 years of life, it's that it often takes dozens and dozens of no's, sometimes for months on end, to finally hear yes. The good news is that one yes is all it takes. 
At MEX, I've learned to refuse to define yourself by the college you were accepted into, the grade on your chemistry final, or an arbitrary measure of your intelligence, worth, or beauty. I urge you instead to define yourself by the impact you've made and the community you've built, both here at MEX and wherever your life may take you. Reflecting the past couple of days reminded me that as a child, I remember adults in my la life often asking me the exciting question of, what do you want to be when you grow up? And as I grew older, I realized that question brought on a lot of stress for me. And it turns out I was asking myself the wrong question. Here's a better question. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Your what may very well change, perhaps even more than once. And that's OK. But your who doesn't have to. So who do you want to be when you grow up? I'm not denying the importance of good test scores, hard work, but rather I'm reminding you that that is only one factor. I, um, when I think of who I want to be, I think of resilience. Specifically, I think of my mom, who has gone through dozens of struggled, struggles, worked full time to support my family, and has done it all with incredible grace and a smile on her face. And as I continue to grow up, I want to be resilient, and I hope you all do too. I hope we can trust ourselves enough to pick ourselves up as we fall and overcome the obstacles that stand between us and the best versions of ourselves. And as illustrated by one of Mex's core values, resilience will take you incredibly far in life. And as an individual, the impact you can make on the world starts the moment you let go of your fear of failure and you're already halfway there. You chose to leave behind a school you were familiar with in hopes that MEX was the right place for you. At MEX, we've learned to juggle a lot. Studying for a calculus final in a short lunch break, scrambling to balance high school projects with college exams, and always being open to the unknown. You took a leap of faith once seniors coming to MEX, and I'll leave you with this. Refuse to let this be the last time you take a risk. Continue to pursue your dreams, push yourself to get wiser and stronger, and when you feel like there is no space for you in this world, put your foot down and make that space yourself. I urge you to never let go of your eagerness. If you want something, work for it, and don't let the fear of losing an election, being rejected from a job, or being embarrassed bar you from your shot at achieving greatness. But I know we are all fully prepared to enter this new stage of our life with grace. Class of 2023, I wish you all the best of luck wherever your life may take you. We are going to be the generation of change, and I am proud and grateful to have walked alongside you for this stretch of the journey. Thank you. Thank you, Naima. And now, let us turn our attention to the students for whom we have gathered to celebrate today. To the Mission Early College High School Class of 2023, it is my pleasure to share a few last words with you as you prepare to close out this chapter in your educational journey. Although the majority of you had a challenging transition to MEX due to the global pandemic and shutdown of schools, you persisted and pushed through those obstacles and achieved some impressive milestones along the way. I don't know if you know, so I'm gonna share them with you. You should definitely take pride in the following achievements. Your class has a 100% graduation rate. <laughs> 97.5% of your class met the requirements for four-year university admission, which is the highest for any MEX graduating class to date. 86% of you qualified for the Golden State Merit Diploma Seal, which is the highest of any MEX graduating class to date. And 90% of your class met or exceeded 
the English standard on the Smarter Balance Assessment exceeding both the county and the state percentages. These are impressive statistics and you should all be proud of yourselves and each other. So please give yourselves a hand. So as I thought about what to say to you guys today, I kept thinking, you know, we really didn't have enough time to really get to know you as we have previous classes. Obviously because we were interrupted by the pandemic. So I appreciate your very wise classmate Nama's speech and hope you think about her question asking, who do you want to be when you grow up? As we prepare to send you off into the next phase of your life, I would ask that you give some thought to a similar question along those same lines. Who are you right now? I'm not referring to your name. I'm not referring to who you want to be. I'm referring to who you are as a person, the essence of your humanity, and in the very core of your being. Who are you? This is what college admissions officers, potential employers, potential life partners, or anyone who may cross your path might ask themselves when deciding whether or not to join forces with you in partnership. There's an old proverb that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In today's vernacular, we would say something like, what you think about yourself and how you see yourself is what you will eventually become. And why is that? Well, years ago, I read this book. It had a huge impact on my life, it really did. And it was entitled, What's On Your Mind? Unfortunately, I can't remember who the author was. <laughs> but one of the main ideas in this book is that we have the ability to control our thoughts. In the midst of all that we are bombarded with throughout the day, we decide what thoughts to focus on, good or bad. According to the author, if we continually think about certain things, it will eventually play out in this manner. Our thoughts lead to actions. Actions become habits. Habits shape our character, and our character determines our eternal destiny. Thoughts not only shape who we are, they manifest into actions that demonstrate to others who we are. However, in this new era of technology, it can be tempting to let others think for you. Believe me, believe me, I seriously considered letting someone else do the thinking for me on my speech to you. I seriously considered downloading chat GBT. And I seriously considered letting the chat write a message for me to you. The only thing that stopped me was knowing that I would be misrepresenting a robot's output as my own work, my own thoughts. And that felt wrong. It felt like a lie. And that is not a part of my character. Although artificial intelligence may have some benefits when used properly, we must be careful not to do away with those things that help us discover who we are. There's great value in the process of discovering your own thoughts and beliefs that lead to actions and shows us who we truly are. When you are asked a question about your thoughts, perspective, or viewpoint, chat GPT may be able to give you a perspective, but it's not your thought or your perspective. You are only allowing something else to do your thinking for you. And sadly, you are also robbing yourself of the reward of self-realization and discovery. How you feel about something is important. What you experience is important. And the sharing of that 
is what resonates with other humans and helps us build relationships and genuine care for one another. But if you hide behind the fabrication and perpetration of some artificial intelligence and artificial creativity, you diminish the value of your own intelligence. Don't deny yourself the opportunity to grow into the person you deserve to be. So wherever you go from here, whether college or career, as Ms. McVeigh would say, show up for yourself every day. That rhymed, y'all. <laughs> show up as your unique, sincere, and authentic self. Demonstrate to yourself who you are and let others get to know who you are. Let them get to know you and appreciate all that you bring to the table through the unique gifts and talents that only you possess. There's only one you. Don't let a chat bot, the internet, social media, a sound bite, TikTok, or a tweet speak for you. Exercise your own power to be the creator of your own thoughts, revealing who you are. And once you know who you are, then you can decide if that's who you want to be. See yourself as the person you want to be, and eventually your actions will follow. Finally, my hope and exhortation is that you come to know who you are, that you choose to love yourself as you are, and that you strive each day to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2023. All right, y'all, it's time. Graduates, please stand. Members of the board, I would like to certify that our students have completed the prescribed course of study set forth by the Board of Education of the Santa Clara Unified School District and are ready to receive their diplomas. I would like to present to you the class of 2023. <laughs> board members, I welcome you to line up and congratulate our graduates as they come forward. Graduates, please come forward to receive your diplomas. Dylan Jacinto. Bradley Silva. Mahmoud Humberto Montero Alec Parahodnik
Bikram Gengit. Isabella Dozer. Mariana Vargas Ruiz. Miriam Jamil. Ariana Gomez. Lana Filavong. Go Nayeb. Kezia Stelzer. Alina Ahmed. Miriam Zaidi. <laughs> Nuha Sheikh. <laughs> Nadia Moss. <laughs> Jaden Cardoza. Amar Suleiman. <laughs> Ramsey Ibrahim. <laughs> Afan Sayed. Sarah Manal Ismaili. Naima Siddiqui. Serbi Pandey. <laughs> Elias Lopez. Students, at this time, I invite you to transfer your tassel 
from the right to the left in recognition of your graduation. Turn and face the audience. <laughs> they wanted to throw their cap so bad. <laughs> All right, find your caps. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduated class of 2023. Congratulations. <laughs> I would like to thank you all for joining us in our celebration of the seniors of Mission College, Mission Early College High School's class of 2023. As we prepare to dismiss, please remain in your seats until the last graduate has exited the plaza, at which time you are welcome to join them outside on the hardscape. Thank you all and enjoy celebrating with your students. Graduates, you are dismissed. Ha, ha, ha.